Well, good morning, Broadway. Glad you are here today. Welcome to Sunday morning church. Really, really glad that you are here. Turn around and tell your neighbor right now, right here, right in this moment, you are in the right place at the right time. Hey, no other comments are necessary. No other comments like, like, wow, I'm surprised to see you here or anything like that, okay? But you are in the right place at the right time. And it is time to get started this morning. Wow, we, uh, we have a, uh, a brand new guest with us this morning. Many of you have already been gawking over little Paxton. He is a week old yesterday, and so uh, as a uh, barbecue friend of mine used to say, he is fresh. So uh, Paxton, Jennifer, Roman, Salvador, Richard, congratulations. There's a, there's a pretty huge glow back there on the back of the uh, sanctuary this morning. So uh, thank the Lord for Paxton, Jennifer, and everybody's doing well. And I am so glad that you are here this morning and the rest of you as well. I just have one reminder for you. Announcements coming in just a little while. But um, uh, it is coming up on the season where things can kind of fluctuate rather quickly, weather-related things and stuff like that. Remember a couple of years ago in October, we had some weird weather. And I just want, I want you to know that follow us on social media. Uh, because on social media, we'll put out any kind of uh, details about church services or something like that uh, due to weird weather or whatever's going on. But also, you can follow us on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and uh, you can keep up to date with all the announcements and the things that we are praying for daily. Holly sends out something every day, something specific that we are praying for and uh, so you can kind of pray together, or we can pray together as a church. So follow us on the socials, and uh, you'll be up to date with all that. And uh, ladies, of course, went to the uh, ladies' retreat yesterday over in uh, Snyder. Was that good? Was it, was, it, was it great? Was it inspiring? Was Lisa Welchel still good looking? I was, uh, <laughs> I was waiting for Michael. That's all I said that for. I, I don't know. I just, uh, uh, does she still live in Texas? Did she say that? Did she say yes? Where? Did she say where she's originally from? Fort Worth. Littlefield. No way. So she was almost home. Well, sort of. Yeah. If you're born in Littlefield, you want to move. That's usually the way it goes. But, uh, but man, I'm telling you, that's, that's fantastic. Glad you guys had a great time yesterday. Uh, we are looking forward. This week is hopefully going to be a week that we really concentrate and pray, getting ready for revival. Next Sunday morning at this time, we will have our revival opening meeting. And uh, so Brother Kent is flying in on Saturday, and uh, he'll be here with us Sunday morning bright and early, and you won't want to miss a single time of revival. Sunday, regular service times then, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 7 o'clock each night. Tell you one thing about how we love to do revival meetings as far as love offerings are concerned. Brother Kent comes on a love offering basis, okay? That means that he doesn't require $10,000 to come and uh, be a part of our revival service like some people do. So he's coming on love offering basis only. So what we will do is Sunday's offering will be just a general offering like we always take. It'll go to the church expenses, salaries, bills, all that kind of stuff. Insurance, which is outrageous. And uh, then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, we will take an offering. And all of the money that comes in on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night will go directly to Brother Kent as a love art. Now, we don't want to give him a like offering, okay? You know what I'm talking about? If he gets like a couple bucks, that's not even, I don't, I don't even really like you offering kind of thing. But you'll love Brother Kent, so you'll want to give him a great offering 
on uh, either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday night, okay? So all that money will combine together and give that all to him. That way you can be a blessing to his ministry known as Ignite Ministries, and uh, he goes far and wide preaching the gospel. So let's have a word of prayer this morning. We get started with our service. Going to be a great one. Got baptism here in just a little while. Can't wait to preach for you this morning. Can't wait to sing these grace songs either. Let's bow for a word of prayer, and here we go. Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much for the love that you have for us. You are so, so incredible. You are so great. You are so mighty. You are so awesome. And uh, we realize today that we coming into your sanctuary, are in your very presence, that you surround this place, that you are in this place, that you are able, God, because you are everywhere at one time, to be speaking to each and every one of our hearts right now. So open us up to what you have to say. Open open us up through the singing as we worship together this morning and, and lift you up in song. I pray, Lord, that you would also inspire us to uh, to think, to concentrate, and to be open to what your Spirit has to say to us today. And we lift this prayer up to you because we lift this service up to you and know that we don't want to do it on our own. We want you to come in and inhabit this place starting with the praises of your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. It's Wonderful Grace of Jesus, page 198 in the songbook. Words are on the screen. As we sing out this morning this great song, it's vocal aerobics. So here we go. Let's sing together. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise begin? Taking away my burden, setting my spirit free. Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Wonderful grace of Jesus, grace for even me, broader than the scope of my transgression. Greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. Praise me. All right, everybody, make it through the first verse, okay? Everybody need a deep breath now? Anybody ready to pass out yet? Okay, because we're just getting started. Here we go. Last verse together. Here we go. Wonderful grace of Jesus. Reaching the most divine, by His transforming power, making Him God's dear child, purchasing peace and heaven for all eternity, for the wonderful grace of Jesus reaches me. Wonderful the matchless grace of Jesus, deeper than the mighty rolling sea. Wonderful grace of Jesus, for even me, for even me. Broader than the scope of my transgression, greater far than all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus. warm up for this one. He's a wonderful Savior to me. If you can echo that, would you say amen this morning? Amen. Boy, he is so good. Let's sing it about it today. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was bound by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful, He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Hey, is he a wonderful
wonderful Savior this morning? Amen. Some of you are camouflaging that very well. So smile a little bit when you sing the second verse. All right, here we go. He's a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Everything I need in Him I always find. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful for me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Tear and cross the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace, more pressing on my way. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Jesus is the name above all names as we lift him up this morning as our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords, our Emmanuel, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel. is Lord and he is risen from the dead and he is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. for our sins, for being raised again, for our justification, the freedom that we have in you because you today, Jesus, are alive. And you are Lord. We believe that. We call upon you today as our Lord. Please bless this offering now as we continue to worship through our giving. 
Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. We continue to sing marvelous grace. Grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Grace greater than our sin. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord. Grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount of singing this morning. Thank you so much. Kiddos, time to come down and join Brother Phil this morning. Children's time with Phil. All right. We're going to go ahead and continue with our kind of our things around the, the house this week. How many of y'all have a job a chore to vacuum. So, any of y'all? A couple of that. A couple of y'all. Y'all, y'all, y'all get to y'all get to have the fun of vacuuming around the house and everything. And so I didn't go and get the regular vacuum because it'd be kind of stick up above here. So I went to the nursery. I hope they didn't mind. But I got just <laughs> a. So you just got this kind of vacuum, so that way it'd be easier to handle. But how many of y'all, and be honest, how many of y'all have gone, when you vacuum, you're vacuuming, you go and you see maybe it's a piece of string, maybe it's a piece of lint down there on the floor, you go over it once, maybe go over it twice, still not getting sucked up in there. So you go over there and you reach down, you pick it up, then you put it back down on the ground, and you roll them back over it. Are we all? Yes. Most I know I'm guilty of it usually because I it's either that or I either put it back down or I go and put it in my pocket then I, or I gotta go find a trash can later on. So I usually just kind of pick it up, kind of go and kind of get it unstuck from the carpet, put it back down, go back over it with the vacuum, give the vacuum another shot, another chance to suck it up. And in turn, we're gonna look at a, a couple of things from a vacuum. But for one, we go and we give the vacuum another chance. And that's a good thing about God's grace is that God gives us the chance to follow him. You know, as a, as a child of God, our purpose is to glorify God. And that's in words and our actions is we're supposed to glorify God. And so a lot of times, because we're not perfect, a lot of times we go and we do mess up. But God gives us more chances to go and to follow him. God gives, God puts more, God gives us other chances to be able to go and to, uh, to, to glorify him. In all, of our, in all of our deeds, and all of our actions, and our words. So God goes and he, it's like a vacuum. We give it several chances to go over. God is a God of second and third chances. And even more, as long as we're going and we're trying to go and glorify him. But another thing in a vacuum, though, its job is to do what? What's a vacuum's job? 
clean the dirt, clean, clean, clean the rug. It's going to suck, it's going to suck things up, right? We long years ago, many moons ago, we used to work at a Christian school, and the teachers would go and they would call and say, Hey, you know what? My vacuum's not working. We would go and have to get that and take it apart, and there would be like half a sheets of construction paper and everything else sucked up in there because they would let the kids sit there and go and vacuum in the room, and they would just go up and down the aisles of the desk and just vacuum anything that's in the, that's in the way. And it kind of goes and it keeps. When we go and we suck up stuff in there, it's not supposed to be in there. It goes and we don't have the suction power. We don't go, it doesn't have the power that it needs. And that, that, just like that stuff that goes and gets crawled, gets jammed up in there, that's like sin in our lives. God wants us to have his power. God wants us to use his power in our day-to-day lives. But a lot of times because we allow things to come into our lives that's not good, and we allow that to get sucked, sucked up into our lives, then we're not able to go and be use, as useful to God as he wants. So we've got to make sure we're cleaning that out. We gotta have a time to clean out the vacuum. We gotta have a time to unplug, th- unclog things, and so that's what we need for us today. Is make sure that we're going. Remember, we do your vacuum. You get to go and you get the vacuum. Even if you don't normally get the vacuum, you go home. You surprise your mom and dad and say, "I want to vacuum the living room today." All right, and you go and you think, you know what? God's a God of chances. Our, our, our purpose is to glorify Him in our actions and our deeds and our words. And also, we need to make sure to be thank God for those chances that he gives us to. But also, we need to make sure to remember not to let the junk in our lives as sin clog, up, clog, us, clog us up to where we're not able to be, able to use, be used by God like he wants us to. Let's go ahead and bow our head for prayer. We'll go ahead and pray and dismiss. And do any Father, again, Lord, we just thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you, Lord, just for allowing us to be able to go and to to glorify you and the things in our, in, our, in our daily lives. We just ask, Lord, just help us to, as life goes on, we pray just to help us be able to go and be used by you in some great and mighty ways. Be with these kids, dear Lord, we know they could be used by you in such a great and mighty way. And we just ask, Lord, just to help them to be mindful of these things. Be with the services as we go next door. There are things done there. And be with Pastor as he preaches your word here today, Lord. We just ask, Lord, just thank you for our church. Thank you for your love for us. In Christ's name, amen. hope you'll join me because you're going to know it join me in worship just one more time just as I am without one plea what have thy blood worship
just as I am, I would be lost, but mercy and grace, my freedom bought, and now to to be mended I come wounded to be healed I come desperate to be rescued I come empty to be filled I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb So how are you today? Just as I am. How are you today? I'm tired. I am. We uh, were at Mary Harden Baylor Friday and Saturday with Abby. It was family weekend. We're family. So we went on Friday afternoon and had Friday night and most of the day yesterday with her and left the football game last night. Uh, after Mary Hart and Baylor went up 35 nothing in the first half, ultimately almost scoring 50 points in the first half, uh, not much of a game, so we left and went to Bucky's. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Got a barbecue sandwich and got home last night about 12:30 to some very happy puppy dogs who uh, weren't quite ready to go to sleep yet when we got home. And so I, if I'm talking about just as I am this morning, I'm a little tired. But I believe if we would be honest with ourselves this morning, we, just as we are, may be a little tired spiritually, a little fatigued with the world. How many of you might be honest enough to say, I'm just tired of myself? Amen, brother. Hmm. Yeah. I get tired of me. Uh, I wear me out all the time. And uh, we come to a time of preaching, and especially what we've got in front of us today in John chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. That song becomes very fitting. In fact, 
quite thematic for what lies before us today in this message. Just as I am. The Sunday before we begin revival would probably be good if we began to think about where we are spiritually, physically, emotionally. Where am I? And I want to. I want to tell you something today that will be further explained as as the message moves forward, but one of the works of the Holy Spirit is, is to search us, and one of the greatest things that our flesh does is push away the Holy Spirit's searching. So that we do our best to ignore him, to throttle him, or to just, let's be quite honest, say, hey, that Holy Spirit is such a mystery, who can figure him out? Now, I'm not saying today that we can figure the Holy Spirit out, but I'm saying that we need to be willing to be moved. Convicted, shaped by the Spirit's voice in our lives. I think Kim read to me something that she was scrolling through Facebook on uh, in our trip yesterday or day before, I can't remember. And she said the, the more the Word of God is in our lives, the louder the Holy Spirit's voice becomes, or something like that. And so the more that we are void or voiding ourselves of God's Word, the less of the Spirit's voice we are going to be able to hear. After all, the Scripture is inspired by the Spirit. And so when the Bible is speaking about the Holy Spirit, the Bible is verifying itself with him. And so there's no need to really be afraid of the Holy Spirit, or there's really no need to to push away the searching of the Holy Spirit or the ability that the Holy Spirit has to search us. And that's exactly where we find a very religious man in John chapter 3. Beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, and he was a ruler of the Jews. That same man, Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi... Teacher is what that translates out to. We know that thou art a teacher, come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, that you're doing, except God be with him. Now let me just tell you right now, the nighttime encounter with Nicodemus Coming to Jesus at night is likely due to the need for him to be discreet. He didn't want any of his colleagues to find out that he was uh, meeting up with Jesus. Because evidently Jesus had already made made an impression. And there was already forming an alliance against this Jesus who was taking all the religious leaders' attention away from them. And we find out that the Pharisees, you can add the Sadducees and the scribes and the lawyers with that uh, group in other uh, Gospels, 
liked attention. In fact, that's really even what they were thinking about when they got dressed every morning. Their long robes and everything that they decorated themselves up with. And they like to be the loudest person in the square greeting everyone. They liked to be the center of attention. And yet here we are, Nicodemus privately, discreetly coming to Jesus at night. He didn't want any of his colleagues to know that he was interested in speaking with this teacher privately. Being a ruler means that uh, he was very high up in what is known as the Sanhedrin Council. This was a 71, why 71, I have no idea, a 71 member group of men and was the ruling body over the Jews. They were the ones that dictated everything Jewish. And everything had to fit into the Sanhedrin box. Okay? Sometimes don't we kind of want God to just fit in a little box? We just want Him to be, act, do certain things, and no more and no less. Don't cross that line. That was the Sanhedrin. And they made sure that no lines were crossed, did these 71 men. The fact that he was a ruler means that he was really high up in this group of overseers. So, because of his position, again, coming to Jesus by night would make sense. He had to be careful. He had to be careful about being seen with Jesus because they had already, his group, formed an opinion about him. But his curiosity, as we find out in verse 2, was piqued through the miracles. He says, we know that thou art a teacher from, come from God, because nobody can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. One of the interesting things about John is he actually doesn't record miracles. He records signs. Signs that Jesus truly is the Messiah. Why? Because he wrote late in the first century to a second, third generation of Christian church that needed to continue to be verified that Jesus was and still is indeed the Messiah. And so John's miracles that he records are actually all sign miracles beginning in chapter 2 with the water to wine ending in John 11 when he raised Lazarus from the dead. So each sign proved that Jesus was truly Lord over something. So when you read John next time just pick out the signs that John talks about. There's a blind man that's healed um, so on and so forth. So Nicodemus, having probably already seen, as Matthew and Mark particularly talk about, the miracles that Jesus did very early on in his ministry. And then, of course, the real famous one over at Cana, not too far from where they are, where he turned that water into wine at the wedding. His interest is peaked. His curiosity is up. I've got to, I've got to know about this Jesus. You see, what Nicodemus was experiencing was a little bit of the Holy Spirit in his life. The Holy Spirit is the agent who draws us to Jesus. Do you see that? He's the one, the Spirit is saying, Nicodemus, hey, knock, 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 knock on your door, Nicodemus. Jesus will say that in, in uh, Revelation chapter 3. We'll get there in our study of the churches on Wednesday night. And Nicodemus was willing to answer the door. Are you? Am I? Are we willing to answer the door? 
through what Nicodemus spoke to Jesus, he must have known there was something extraordinary about him. And the Spirit was verifying this. He wanted to know what it was that made Jesus so special. And you know what? so great about this is Jesus will have nothing to do with this. Jesus is not going to answer this question at all. In fact, what he says next really kind of comes out of left field. Much like in John chapter 4, remember we studied that a couple of weeks ago with the woman at the well and they're having this conversation about water. She's not getting it, so finally God... Jesus just cuts right to the chase and goes, hey, why don't you go call your husband? Well, that turned the conversation, just as the conversation's about to turn here. In verse 3, Jesus answered Nicodemus and said to him, having nothing to do with what he just asked, verily, verily, truly, truly, most assuredly, I say to you, I do all these great signs and miracles. Well, that's not what it says there, is it? Jesus says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay? We read verse by verse in our Bibles. And we would probably very promptly read verse 4. But I'm thinking it took a dramatic pause for Nicodemus to digest what he just said. And to to think, hey, you know what? Uh, That's not what I just asked about. So he kind of has to take a right turn with Jesus and come up with a response. His response is a pretty normal response, especially if if you've never heard anything about being born again. Because Nicodemus says, uh, Jesus, uh, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and there be born again? Jesus answered, verse 5, Verily, verily, truly, truly, most assuredly, I say to you, except a man be born of water and of the, say it with me, spirit. What's Noteworthy about that word spirit. It's capitalized. Who are we talking about? The Holy Spirit. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot, somebody say with me, cannot, cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit, period. So not missing a beat, Jesus wastes no time in getting to the heart of the matter with Nicodemus. Maybe Jesus was tired. Been a long day. Maybe... Peter's wife had made biscuits and gravy for supper. Can I get an amen? And he was hungry. It's possible. Hey, by the way, there is absolutely nothing wrong with breakfast for dinner or supper, that last meal of the day. Nothing wrong with some pancakes and fried eggs, make mine over easy, love the runniness. So yeah, there's nothing better than runny eggs and syrup with pancakes. I got one amen. I'm just, thanks, Brother David. I appreciate that. Runny eggs into your hash browns. You just mix it all up, man. It's all going to the same place anyway. And it tastes really good on the way down. 
I'm really grossing my wife out right now. That's really the only reason I'm doing this. She's a hard fried egg person, man. I'm telling you, she breaks the yolk as soon as it goes in the pan, and I still love her for it. I don't know why Jesus is in such a hurry. I don't know why he cuts right to the chase. It is at night, after all. But Jesus spends no, I mean, he wastes no time getting right to the heart of the matter. And what he does here is he reveals the basic need of all mankind. How do we get back to God? How do we get back to our Creator? How is it that I am so desperately separated from Him right now? But I really want to be a part of the kingdom of God. And I don't think you're at church today and would say, nope, that's not me. I don't want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Most people who come to church want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Or at least the Lord may have led you here out of curiosity. Jesus says we must be born again. So taken back by what Jesus said, Nicodemus obviously needs some clarification. All right, our first birth is the birth of water from our mom in the womb. It's a water birth. Jesus says there's got to be a second birth. This birth comes when we are baptized into the Holy Spirit, immersed with the Spirit, or the Spirit overcomes us, revealing the fact that we are lost. And our lostness is because we are sinners. And sin separates us from God and the kingdom of God. And so Jesus says the only way not to be lost anymore is to be born again through the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the agent, the one who draws us to Jesus Christ for salvation. To enter into heaven then, he tells Nicodemus, we must have been born physically. How many of you are born and alive right now? Okay, some of you don't have the energy to raise your hand, I get it, but at least give me a half a nod. Okay, you're alive, nobody's dead in here today. By the way, we almost had a lady die in our service uh, in, at Concho one time on a Sunday night, quite frightening. I pre I, it didn't deter me from preaching 30 minutes, but it was frightening. She was sitting right back there about where Tony is, so Tony, stay awake. All right, good, good. Got a little hand raised there. All right, good deal. So to enter into heaven, we must have been born physically, naturally, through water, and being born again supernaturally through the Spirit. And since many men of the Sanhedrin, here's another little history lesson for you, many men of the Sanhedrin actually inherited their spot. So Nicodemus' dad could have been one of the ones on the Sanhedrin before Nicodemus moved up into his spot. Jesus was telling him that his religious position was not enough to enter into the kingdom of God. Just because your mom, your dad, your grandmother was the saint of all saints does not make you a saint. Or me. Now, I love the fact that my granddad and my grandmother were great saints of God. But their relationship with Jesus Christ was not my relationship with Jesus Christ. Just because they were saved. So there is a personal nature to this. Nicodemus, you're not born of the Spirit just because your daddy was a religious man or a member of the Sanhedrin. Verse 7. Jesus continues to speak, new thought, marvel not, that I said unto thee, you must be born again. 
or ye individually, you personally, Nicodemus, must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, or where it wishes, is what that means. Now here's the sound thereof, but canst not tell where, uh, whence it cometh, whether it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So there's a great mystery that's involved in salvation. And the great mystery is the fact that the second birth is supernatural. It's not the natural birth. It's the supernatural birth. If it's supernatural, that means it's really hard to explain. It's really hard to grasp. We just had dinner with, uh, or supper, if, again, whichever way you go. I, so I've grown up so much in the south and the north that I just intersperse them both, okay? We had the last meal of the day last week with some friends from Coleman after the death of in the church, of our former church in while we were in the course of conversation, it was one of the ladies that, that while we were at the church, her husband came to know Jesus. And boy, we've been praying for him, praying for him, praying for him. And we were at Iron Men several years ago. A guy by the name of Herd Revis or Revis preached that night. And I'm guaranteeing you, he sucked all the wind out of the sanctuary. And when I say he, it was with the capital H, the Holy Spirit. And come invitation time, I looked over at my friend, and he looked at me, and he said, I can't breathe. And I went, me neither. He said, I've got to get saved right now. We went to the altar. And he got saved right then. I, I, I'm telling you right now, it's the most supernatural thing I've ever witnessed in my life. It was absolutely unreal. It was so unreal that it, I've got a headache right now just thinking about it. I, I just get so overwhelmed. Seriously, I'm having like a spasm right now. Verse 8, the wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you can't exactly tell where it's coming from, and you don't know where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So evidently, Jesus could tell that he was blowing Nicodemus' mind right now. All sorts of things were going through his mind. So Jesus says these simple words, hey, marvel not. Just calm down a second. Okay? Even though this is supernatural, you can understand it. Okay? God's not going to put something out there and then make it unattainable. He loves us too much. The words marvel not actually mean, don't hold what I'm saying in such high admiration so that you cannot accept it, believe it. Just as salvation by grace through faith is such an easy concept, we cannot hold it out as something so incredible that we believe it to be unattainable. It is not something mystical or only for a select few. In fact, 2 Peter 3.9 says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All of us, every one of us should come to know Jesus Christ. And then Jesus uses the wind illustration to kind of help us understand. We don't see the wind, but we see evidence of what it can do and what it does a couple of weeks ago when we got our you know half inch of rain praise the lord right in you know in three or four days it rained a half inch at my house either that or my rain gauge has a hole in it i'm not real sure but during one of those episodes where there was a little storm that blew up just all of a sudden i'm sitting in the living room and and i just the wind starts blowing and you know what? I'm thinking, well, I don't know where that came from. And guess what? True to the words of Jesus, I don't know where it went. 
But the next day, I went into the backyard, and it ripped a branch off of one of our trees. I saw the evidence of what the wind did the previous night. That's exactly what Jesus is saying. It's a simple illustration, isn't it? We don't know where the wind came from, but we don't, we don't know where it's going, just as we don't know exactly what the Spirit's doing. I don't know what the Spirit's doing in your life right now, just as you don't know what the Spirit's doing in mine. But we know this, there's evidence of his working all around. Amen? We can all experience it, or at least we should be. The Holy Spirit's work, of course, is an invisible work, but it is also an obvious work, is what Jesus is saying. So this all leads to the question. Nicodemus is now firmly rooted in this conversation. Verse 9 says, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can, and what's our sermon series called right now? These things. How can these things be? How can these things be? Jesus' reply might be just as important in verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto him, Aren't you a master? Aren't you one of the rulers of the synagogue, the church for the Jews? And knowest not these things? His reply was to question Nicodemus right back with these things. You know, as I observe this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus, I immediately get a couple of questions in my mind. The first question that I have to ask is, how in the world does a religious man not understand these things? That's my first question. How does he not understand what Jesus is talking about? He's a leader in the church. Could it be that the church today is so powerless because... We don't know what Jesus is talking about with these things. Because we're not spiritually minded. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded, though, is to be full of life. And our church, guys, it's pretty lifeless. Ouch. Don't look around. Because I'm talking to each and every one of us. And largely it's because I think we've wrapped our church experience up in a religious bow. Rather than really seeking personally how the holy spirit wants to just jump in and lead and rule everything that we do we're so caught up in 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 the masks that we wear that when the holy spirit tries to get in we just shove him away you know, uh-uh that's not a that's not a garment I wear. That's not something I do. What was it that kept Nicodemus from comprehending these spiritual things? I believe, like us, too many of us, we have just become all too religious. He was set in his ways. And, by the way, in the ways of his relatives. 
He was a ruler largely because he had probably inherited that position from his dad. His colleagues were telling him, this is what you do, this is what you look like, this is how you act, this is what you say, this is when you show up, this is when you stand up, this is when you sit down, this is when you say amen, this is when you read, this is when you're quiet, this is when you pray. Now listen, I am all about having an order of service, okay? I like a little bit of order. I mean, it's right here. I know your previous pastor didn't. I know that. Somewhere I believe we need to have a little movement of the Spirit. And be okay with it. What would be wrong with having an invitation after the first song if it just hit us? What would be wrong if right now you said, Brother Daniel, you got to stop preaching right now because i got to get to the, I gotta get to the altar. You know, Peter didn't ever finish his sermon from Acts chapter 2. You know that, right? The Holy Spirit's movement was so great, he didn't get to finish. He didn't get the last poem in. They stopped him and they said, Peter, we can't stand it any longer. What do we do to get saved? I like order, but I don't want to order the Holy Spirit right out of the place. Nor should we want to order the Holy Spirit right out of our lives because of traditions or colleagues or church members, our brothers and sisters. What are they going to think? Man, Nicodemus' environment was all about this structure. And so when Jesus started talking to him about spiritual things, these things, he had no clue. Just as I believe today, us as a church, we don't have a clue. Why do I know that? Because if we really believed what the Holy Spirit could do in the lives of people around us, there wouldn't be all of these empty spaces right through here. This, y'all are doing pretty good. Congratulations. What's up with you guys? See what I'm saying? If the Holy Spirit was really evident in our lives, people would go, what makes you so different? Just like Nicodemus definitely noticed there was something different. And let me just tell you one thing. Jesus Christ was a Spirit-filled Jesus. Every single day. That's how he knew what to do. That's how he knew what to act. Remember, he was disconnected from God. So how did he know what to do, what to say, where to be, how to act? Because the Holy Spirit gave him the guidance, the truth, the evidence, the power every single day. Is it possible then that like Nicodemus said in his ways of his relatives, colleagues, environment, that we too have become this way? And are blind to these things. Are we so clogged up by the world we live in. That we cannot discern the movement of the Holy Spirit. At all in our lives anymore. Like Nicodemus there can be several reasons. Tradition. Fear of what others might think. Peer pressure. Narrow minds. We could be saying this is the only way God moves. This is the only time God moves. Anything else must be crossing the line over into that holy roller stuff. It is as if we have locked the Holy Spirit into a cage. And we only want Him to come out when it's convenient for us. Oh Lord, we're having a revival next week. We need your Spirit. Huh? Huh? Hey, if we've got him locked in a cage now, he ain't coming out then. I think sometimes we lock the Holy Spirit in a cage until we can fully understand him. 
Well, let me just tell you this. The Holy Spirit is 100% God. Just as we don't understand God fully, we will never understand the Holy Spirit fully, but we should search Him. We should allow Him to search us. We should allow Him to move us. We should be empowered by Him. We must learn and accept that He works in many unseen ways and might be working right now just like the wind blows. We don't know where it's coming from. We don't know where it's going, but we just know He's working. Second question that I have is, do we need to come out of the dark and into the light about these things? You know, that was Nicodemus' deal, man. He's in the dark. He comes to Jesus by night thinking it's discreet, but it's definitely symbolic, isn't it? He's in the dark. But he's curious about the light. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Did he light up the world while he was here? Absolutely. Nicodemus said, I need to, I need to get some of that light. Jesus, you see, was laying out his plan for salvation for Nicodemus. Nicodemus thought his religious works were his path to salvation and being accepted of God. Some today may be sitting here thinking that if I do good, am good, be good enough, maybe my good works will outweigh my bad works and Jesus will let me in. That's just not true. Jeremiah tells us that all of our righteousness is like a pile of filthy rags over in the corner of the room. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament and the New, none is righteous, no, not one. And so if you think that you can be good enough, you'll never be good enough. There was only one that was good enough, and he died for us. So that we could have or be clothed by his righteousness. The only way is through Jesus. We fall into the trap of good works today as being our way into heaven. And you know what? I haven't heard each and every one of your salvation experiences. I hope to. But if you have never trusted in Jesus and Him alone for your salvation, that's something that needs to be done today. Because if you're trusting yourself, you're trusting your works, you're hoping for the best, that's not going to cut it. God looks at us and He either sees the blood of Jesus covering our sins or a whole lot of effort that's going for naught. Even though Nicodemus went away from Jesus pondering that night, I want to tell you this, seeds were planted. Before he left, Jesus was able to share God's plan. Okay, Nicodemus is still listening when John 3.16 is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Nicodemus is like, is that really you? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen to this. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but to, or but, that the world through him might be, what? Saved. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned... But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So Jesus was able to give the plan of salvation there to Nicodemus. Seeds were planted. Nicodemus went away still in the dark that night. 
But thankfully, Nicodemus ultimately grasped these things. Did you know that? In chapter 7, he is, he is still dealing with this issue, but he's, he's telling his colleagues, he's like, maybe there is something to this Jesus. And of course, his colleagues said, oh yeah, 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 Nicodemus, you and your family, you guys are from Galilee. You certainly would be sympathetic to one of your own. That's paraphrasing. But then, in John chapter 19, flip over there. Verses 38 and 39. Jesus has just died on the cross. And John is the only gospel writer to record anything about Nicodemus for us. But he records this at the end of his writings. John 19, 38, after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave, gave him permission. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus down off the cross. Verse 39. And there came also Nicodemus. And John, just in case there was another Nicodemus hanging around, clarifies which at the first came to Jesus by night. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a 100-pound weight, then took they, the body of Jesus, wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the matter of the Jews was to bury. I'm telling you right now, Nicodemus came out of the dark and into the light. He understood these things, these things that are spiritual. He grasped them and trusted Jesus to save him. Will you? If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, if you're trusting your works, you're trusting your mama's faith, your daddy's faith, your grandparents' faith, your best friend's faith, that ain't going to happen. And it's not going to work. We call it today a personal relationship with Jesus for a reason, because it's each and every one of us a personal face. Is that something that needs to happen today? Do you need to know Jesus today? If so, we're going to stand up in just a moment, and we're going to sing, and I want you to come down. I'm going to stand right down front this morning. But I want you to come to me, and I want you to say, Brother Daniel, what you said is exactly what I needed to hear, and, and I know I need to be saved. I don't understand it all, but I know I need to. Today's the day. Others of us, really, guys, we're, we're just bound up. Like Nicodemus was in all this religion. And not allowing the Holy Spirit to really fully show himself within us and in our church. And we're just going through the motions. If you're tired of that. Maybe you just say today at this altar, Lord, I'm, I'm just tired of going through the motions. Would you just reveal your spirit in me? Here I am. Let's stand together. Let's bow our heads. Instrumentalists coming right now to get this invitation going right now. So, Lord, we give this time to you right now. It is vitally important. If there is one today that is here, Lord, I've been praying about this message for a while, and I didn't know who would show up today, but I know you know. And if there's one today here that needs to know you as Savior, would you please, please, please touch their heart right now? Draw them to your Son, the power of your Holy Spirit. Any of us, Lord, that are just bound up, bound up like Nicodemus was, would you please free us today? the power of your spirit. As we sing together, Lord, we give this invitation to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You come today, right now, right now. If the Lord speaks, you come. Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's no to see 
adore. Oh, how he wants to come in. If you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. Receive him and all of your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Time after time he has waited before, and now he is waiting again. To see if you are willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. But the Holy Spirit continues to speak to you. Just hanging on and hanging out today. Let's let's not. Well, let's get, let's get. There's nothing in this let's allow the Holy Spirit to speak to, to us. keep you apart. What is your answer with him? Time, time after, after time, time, he has waited, waited before. before. And now oh, he is waiting. To see if you are willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Thank you. You may be seated. Miss Alcyon, would you please continue to play? I'm going to go get ready for baptism. I also want you to know that uh, you can pray for Emma right now. Okay? Keep talking to her and praying that the Lord reveals what needs to happen in her life right now, okay?
come today, and uh, Clovis Head is going to get baptized to join our church. Now, Clovis shared with me in New Members class a few weeks ago his salvation experience. He knows that he's saved, but never has been spiritually baptized. And so today, he is going to be spiritually baptized and join our church in this fashion. And so, Clovis, I know you know that you're saved. So, upon your public profession of faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection, to walk in the new change. I need a new shirt. <laughs> Maybe a new suit. I forgot I was wearing a vest today. And uh, Andrew's going to come give me some announcements. So we'll be right back. Uh, just a little uh, quick uh, just information. My dad doesn't like dead air. You know, he was a uh, radio DJ for a long time, so he said, I'm going to fill the dead air right here with, with me, so I'm dead air. No, uh, the, we, got a, we got a lot coming up here in the next few weeks. Uh, revival starts, I cannot believe it, next Sunday, so we'll be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night for our time of revival with Brother Kent. I told the teenagers this morning, if you don't come for the content, come for the stories, because he's got a lot of them, he's hilarious, but... Man, the Lord speaks through him mightily, so please come out for that, and uh, think of, be praying this week of who to invite. Uh, I said this uh, about a month or so ago, that people uh, intentionally book stuff for Sunday morning so that they can't be invited to church or they can have an excuse, but they don't book stuff for after work on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so start praying about who you need to invite to this that needs to come to this revival, because uh, I think we can all agree that Sweetwater needs revival. So uh, let's, uh, let's pack out the sanctuary for this, this next week. And then uh, birthday buddies. Birthday buddies will be the, the Thursday after revival. Uh, we'll go over to SIS. So meet here about 2.30. If you have not had the opportunity to come help us out with birthday buddies, please do so. It is uh, one of my favorite times of the month. Going to straight across the street to SIS to just give kids something as simple as a cupcake. It means a whole lot to them. And then uh, softball. Softball, our season is still continuing. We have a, a game tomorrow at 6.30, Field B, uh, which is now uh, an opportunity to do a plug for our social media again because we might have a doubleheader tomorrow. Remember, we missed a game uh, uh, back at early in the season. We might have a doubleheader tomorrow. Uh, and if, if we do, we'll be updating everybody on social media, so make sure you're up to date with that. Uh, but if not, 6.30, we have a game for sure. And then we're still doing our diaper and wipey shower for uh, the Mankatas. Uh, so please continue just to shower them. I mean, I know from firsthand you go through a lot. You go through a lot of diapers and a lot of wipes. So please let's uh, continue to just shower them with just uh, the blessings because that stuff is not cheap. And then uh, Fields of Faith. Fields of Faith is coming up, uh, believe it or not, here in just a little under a month now. That's October the uh, 12th. It's at 7 p.m. over at the Mustang Bowl. Last year it got rained out. We moved it to the auditorium. But uh, this year hopefully we'll be able to do it and actually have fields of faith. But uh, even if we have to do the rain plan, we're still going to be able to meet. And that's October the 12th at 7. We'll meet, we'll meet here a little bit before that and take a, a van or more over as needed. So, uh, so just be in prayer, because this is a time where our, our teenagers, which uh, we already know as the school year start off, that they're hurting as well. Uh, this is just a time for, for the, the Spirit to, to reach into their lives as well. And then, uh, man, Treatsville is coming up quick, so our barrels will be out shortly. And uh, if you have participated in uh, Treatsville the past few years, we go through a lot of candy. So we, uh, we appreciate everything that you were able to, to donate uh, candy-wise, and we'll have those barrels out next Sunday. So uh, I think that is all for the announcements. Did you talk about last week of summer Bible study tonight? I didn't hear that part. Yes, I am wet. 
It's a good thing I'm wearing a dark suit. You can't tell very well, but I'm going to stand up here. Um, tonight, final night of our spiritual gifts Bible study. Starts at 6 o'clock. We'll meet here in the sanctuary, and uh, we'll sing a couple of songs. Our uh, Broadway men going to sing tonight, and then uh, we dismiss last night of our summer Bible study series on spiritual gifts. Please be here tonight, and uh, hope that it's been a great blessing. Give you an opportunity also to uh, begin to prepare ourselves for the week ahead as we get ready for Revival Week. And uh, next Sunday morning, we'll uh, start our revival with Brother Kent. Pray for him as he travels in and as he prays about what the Lord would lead him to preach. I'll tell you this about uh, him as uh, Clovis still gets ready. Um, I asked him when he was here two years ago, I said, I said how, do you, uh, how do you remember what messages you preach at a particular church if you go there in consecutive years or, you know, every other year or so? He said, I make sure and always write them down. And the only reason I asked that question was because I had an evangelist come and preach a, a, a revival for us one year. The next year, I had him back. He preached the exact same message on Tuesday night that he had preached the previous year on Tuesday night. I was like, well, one of two things happened. Either we didn't get it the first time, or this guy needs to pay a little bit better attention. I'm just saying. Maybe I'll just preach the same message next Sunday. Well, I don't get to preach next Sunday morning. So anyway, but uh, so uh, Brother Kent will be preaching all new messages, won't be the same ones. And uh, I'm going to request a couple of illustrations, if you had never heard them, that he'll share with us this time around. Those illustrations about his family. You know, remember he has AJ, BJ, CJ, DJ, and EJ. Five kids, AJ, BJ, CJ, DJ, EJ. He's from Arkansas, okay? What do you say about that? I, well, actually, he's from Oklahoma, but uh, same difference. All right, here we go. Uh, what happened today? Well, Emma Faust today has uh, come forward, and she has gotten saved. Wow, what a, what a great thing. You know, y'all couldn't go anywhere. You're like twins. Yeah, you're a little younger. But, uh, boy, do you ever look like your mom. And, uh, Emma, we are rejoicing with you today uh, and so thankful. And uh, so thankful for what God and His Spirit has done today. I don't need to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Can I just tell you that? Man, the Bible describes Jesus as being our a friend closer than a brother. You know, that's describing, that's describing the Holy Spirit to us as well. He wants to draw us to Jesus. He wants to put us close to Jesus. He wants to keep us close to Jesus and walking in his steps as 1 Peter 2.21 tells, tells us to do. And so, uh, Emma, it's the beginning of a journey, and it's going to be great. And we want to do anything and everything we can to support you, Okay. And so uh, we're just thankful for step one today. Thank you for being obedient to the Spirit's leadership. Okay. All right, Clovis should be here in just a second. And uh, we're going we're gonna to get Emma to stand up here. Anna, why don't you guys, uh, Sam, y'all come on down. Go ahead and start making your way down here. You knew that was coming anyway, so I'll give you a head start. And then all of those who are here for... Clovis, you guys are already on the front here, right right here already, so uh, uh, make sure you're right here ready for the co-star of the show today. Is there anything else I was going to tell you guys? Oh yeah, Beast Feast is uh, October 1st. That's in two weeks. Beast Feast will be back over at Calvary Baptist and... Uh, Guys, if you want to go, we usually leave here around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, sometimes with caravan. I think, I think our church van might actually make it to Snyder, maybe not back, but it, it'll make it there. And, and uh, so if you need a ride, we can talk about that. And uh, Beast Feast is always kind of just a, kind of reminds us a little bit of Iron Man, just one night of it. And a lot of food, a lot of really good food and no veggies. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, no veggies. JC, you excited about that? That's I'm excited about no veggies, too. Last year, I think there were some potatoes. I skipped those as well. I just skipped those, went right to some more fish. So there's Man, they've got a guy in their church that catches crappie 
and then they prepare them all, and that that fried crappie, oh my goodness, is so good. And then I got to eat some sandhill crane for the first time last year. I'd always heard how good that was. It was it was uh, really good. It was fixed on a skewer, kind of like a shish kebab, except it was a crane bob. Bob Crane, rather than Bob White. Stacy doesn't get it. She's looking at me like I don't get it. What are you talking about? You weren't even listening, so it's okay. It's all right. Anybody know the Jeopardy theme? Hey, no, you're not supposed to mention that. Y'all don't get to go over there and enjoy chocolate. What? No, that's not possible. See, I knew that's what you were thinking. That's not possible. You're not invited. (laughs) <laughs> I am just kidding. You probably got the announcement that uh, uh, the women are doing a chocolate uh, buffet fountain thing going on that night as well. So uh, we'll let you ladies take care of that, whatever you all want to do. That's great. Clovis, you're here. Family, up here. Emma, you guys stand up front right here. We are going to rejoice together for what God has done. Kind of scrunch over here. Sam, you might want to move to your left. Move to your left, move to your left. Here we go. Let's get kind of in the middle here. That way all of the people on the video can see us too. Today, the Spirit has moved. Maybe even just the beginning of the movement of the Spirit or even somewhat the continuation. So uh, if you're rejoicing today that uh, Emma Faust has come to know Jesus Christ as her personal Savior, would you let that be known by saying a great, big, Broadway Baptist, amen. Amen. Anybody wants to stand up and say amen, I'd be all right with that too. Come on. All right, amen. Man, I'm telling you, that is exciting stuff. Emma, they're rejoicing in heaven right now for you. Mm. We need to be rejoicing down here. We're accepting into full fellowship with our church today, Clovis Head as well, by baptism. If you're excited and thrilled today that, that uh, Clovis baptized, got baptized today, also baptized me today, would you let that be known by saying a great, big, Broadway Baptist church, amen. amen. Whoo, man, I'm telling you, Miss Joni's wiping away tears. I am too. I am so thrilled today for what God has done and uh, so excited. I really don't want church to end yet. Uh, I got another message if you want to hang around. But uh, anyway, Tracy was shaking her head no. She's like, I'm hungry. Let's get out of here. All right. Uh, grace, grace, marvelous grace is how we end today. Let's sing the chorus of this song. And you come.